Good morning, everyone. Blessed be God. And this is Pro-Life Month, and we priests all throughout this month are going to be talking about various topics regarding the issue of life, human life, and God's plan for human life. It's been almost 49 years now since the U.S. Supreme Court decided in its infamous Roe versus Wade decision that it's permissible for a woman to kill the child in her womb. And in that time, there have been over 60 million abortions. But that doesn't tell the whole story because many of those children who were aborted would have grown up and gotten married, had children, by now grandchildren. There is at least 20, 100, 120 million Americans that are missing because of this terrible, terrible decision by, the, by five judges that said that that child in the womb is not a human being and can be killed at the discretion of the mother. It's, a, it was a, it's probably the, the worst decision ever made in our judicial system because what it does is it says that that child is not a human being. It doesn't have the status of a person and therefore can be killed at will. It's a, it's, it's a terrible, terrible thing. The, those who promoted, and I still do promote abortion, their thesis is that this is what necessary for women to get ahead and to be empowered in order to be, to be able to compete in the marketplace. But are we really empowering women when we're telling them it's okay for them to kill the children in their womb? That's their child. Are we really empowering them? Are we really doing that? Or are we telling them that they are able to do something that they will always regret? Now, this, I don't think any issue has divided our country in our time, certainly in the 20th century on, like this issue. It is the most divisive issue it, because it's not an issue like taxes or health care that men and women of goodwill can differ on. It's either murder or it's not. There's no in-between. There's no way to compromise and find a middle ground in this issue because it's so devastating. And because of that, it has divided our nation for 49 years in an acrimonious way. And that simply will not be resolved, I don't think, until this law is not only reversed, but we as a nation repent for what we've done. Our church leaders, who are often in disagreement on many things, at least on this, we are unanimous. We are unanimous that this is a moral evil, an intrinsic evil, which means that under no circumstances can it be countenanced. And not only is, do our church leaders agree upon, our canon law describes all kinds of things as sin, but only a very few sins are elevated, if you want to use that word, to the level of a crime, such as a, a priest who divulges what was told to him in the confessional, or if you attempt to uh, cause harm, physical harm to the Pope. Those are crimes. It used to be that if you attempted to hurt a priest, that was a crime been downgraded to a sin. I'm sorry about that. But please, still a sin. But abortion is a crime. Not only is and when people say, oh father, it's legal, that we don't we don't go by civil law. We go by divine law. And it reaches the level of a crime. It's so serious. 25% um, of American women have committed abortion. And it's, that's about the same percentage of Catholic women who have also done the same. And it's, it's a, what it's done, it's created a class of women who are very angry, very guilty, very shamed, and very depressed. And there are some women who find relief because at, at no woman would commit an abortion 
for a frivolous reason. She does it because she's being pressured by the father or maybe by her parents or maybe because she doesn't see a way out of this. And so I, we, we look at with compassion on the women who do this. We understand no woman would do this frivolously. And uh, for many, they're told that this is the only way out. And while some will throughout their lives maintain that it was a good decision, they have no regrets, there are some who do that. The vast majority understand that what they did was so wrong and they spend the rest of their lives in those emotions that I just described where they're just full of guilt and shame and remorse because they know. And because of that, it creates this anger in them because if abortion were to be declared illegal or, and somehow this would, would repudiate this terrible decision that they made at that time. So there is this anger that, again, that's, again I think that's part of the visceral emotion that's driving this division in our nation. But it, it's, it's, it is, it's something that cannot be allowed to continue. It's created an incoherent legal system in our nation. So in most states, Arizona being one of them, if someone should murder a pregnant woman, they are charged with two crimes. The perpetrator is charged with two murders. Yet if that same pregnant woman chooses to abort her child, it's completely legal. So there is an, an, an incoherence in our legal system as a result of this. So what are we to do as Catholics? What is our response to this? I mean, we know the bad news. Many of you are more informed on this than I am. We know the bad news, but what should we do? First thing is we need to be informed. We have to be up to date. We need to understand what is happening so that we are, uh, we are we're aware of what is going on so that we can pray and we can uh, adjust ourselves and our positions uh, accordingly. And know how to defend your position intelligently. The enemy always uses the, a distortion of language in order to promote evil. That's true for almost anything, anything that we can think of historically. The enemy will use language in order to portray it as something other than it is. It's a war of words. And unfortunately, we who defend what is good almost always lose the war of words. Early on in the abortion debate, those who defended abortion said, well, it's not a baby. You don't hear that so much anymore. Embryology has removed that argument. But the answer to that is, well, if it's not a baby, then what is it, a raccoon? Exactly what is it if it's not a baby? Of course it's a baby, it's a human being. Um, others will say, well, this is the decision that should be left between the doctor and the mother. And the answer to that is doctors and their patients do have a very special relationship, but no doctor is licensed to commit murder. So no matter what they decide, it's illegal for a doctor to commit murder. So you can't leave a doctor to that decision. <coughs> Don't impose your religious beliefs on me. Have you heard that one? Don't impose your religious beliefs. The answer to that is, this is not, to say that abortion is wrong is not a religious stance. You can be, in fact, the, the, the abortion, the anti-abortion movement, the pro-life movement is composed of deists and atheists because this comes from the natural law. No civilized nation can allow abortion to continue. And so our opposition to abortion we don't let anybody tell you that's because of your religious beliefs. No, this is simply human, a human understanding of what it means to be a person. It has nothing to do with our Catholic beliefs. Although our Catholic beliefs are very strong about it, we articulate it as clearly as anyone, but it doesn't come from a Catholic understanding. It comes from the natural law. And so it, it's not, it's not your, our religious belief. Others will say, we don't know when life begins. That too is a, is, a, is a smoke screen. We know exactly when life begins, at the very instant of conception, when that, that embryo, that zygote has, has all of the DNA that it will ever have for the rest of its life. And it, it also has rece it received an eternal soul at that moment. It now is alive and, and begins to form and grow 
and, and by eight weeks, eight weeks, it has all of the internal organs that it will ever have for the rest of its life. So we know exactly when life begins. Or we'll say, this is my body, my choice. Again, the answer, your body is your body, but that child is not your body. That child is somebody else. And so, again, I'm not trying to be flip here, but I think it's important for us to have the vocabulary and to understand we are not allowing ourselves to be uh, duped by these, this war on words and this distortion of language that, that, that um, uh, promotes something that we know is wrong. We need to vote pro-life. I know that's a contentious issue, and I'm glad this is not an election year. Because, but we do, we need to vote pro-life, and Catholics need to decide when we vote who will most likely advance the pro-life cause, if, who will be the lesser of two evils if we, if we have a choice. That's, Catholics have to think of that because it's the number one moral cause of our age. There's nothing that supersedes it. it it's above and beyond any other issue. High schoolers, college students among us, join pro-life unions, pro-life clubs. Be outright, be very forthright, be very public in your willingness to show that you defend human life. If you know of someone who is considering an abortion, then invite them to come to a place like the Aid to Women Center, where they can receive the care that they need and the love that they need and the guidance and the, and the instruction they need and the resources to help them to bring that child to life. Support the 40 Day for Life campaign, which is going on right now. Everyone is invited to be a part of the 40 Day for Life. Many babies have been saved through that campaign. Now I want to say something that's very important, because we can roar from the pulpit. We can be very forceful from the pulpit about this issue, and we must be. Because if we're not, if we don't, what happens is over time, we become acclimated to, the, to this language, that, this false language. But here is what is truly Catholic, and I really want everyone to hear this carefully. No matter what anyone has done, they are never beyond God's mercy. After saying all that we say about what is morally evil here, what we also have to understand is that God will give forgiveness to anyone who is contrite and sorry. Some of the most poignant, moving, tearful confessions I've ever heard were for women who, after a period of time, have come to seek reconciliation with God. And for them, it was one of the most joyful days of their lives to know they can be forgiven. They can be absolved of their sins. So while our Catholic Church is probably the strongest of all the churches on this issue, we also offer the remedy, along with the psychological healing that comes in with ministries like Rachel's Vineyard and some of the other wonderful ministries out there to help women and men who have participated in this decision. So I think it's very important for us to, on the one hand, to be very, very clear about the exact nature of this sin, but on the other hand, to know that no one is beyond God's mercy and healing if they come with contrite hearts. If we look at the history of the abolition movement, it went on for decades. It went on for decades, and it looked like there was a, an uphill battle they would never win. And because they had the truth on their side, eventually it happened, and slavery was abolished in our nation. And that's true for the pro-life movement. We have to believe and know and hope that if we're very clear, we continue to pray, we continue to do all the things that I've mentioned, the truth will always be victorious. Because Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Amen.